Hey, how's it going, Daily Sulfurs? If you ever failed an emissions test, this video is gonna be for you. Because if you have ever failed an emissions test, it was probably due to an excessive amount of one of these gases, which is either hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, or nitrous oxide. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can diagnose and go about fixing and reducing the amount of each one of these gases in order to pass an emissions test. All right, so first we're gonna try and see what can cause you to have high HC. But before we do that, I think I need to clarify something, and that's your air fuel mixture because in this video I'm going to say a rich condition can do this or a lean condition can cause a, you know different levels of uh, particular emissions gas but basically what that means is in your car you're supposed to have exactly 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel now depending on if you have a bad sensor or maybe a, another mechanical problem you could have more or less of one of these and that can uh, cause a, either a rich or a lean condition so on the fuel side if you have let's say uh, two parts of fuel because maybe you have a bad O2 sensor uh, then you're gonna have two parts of fuel to 14.7 parts of air which means you have too much fuel, fuel to too little air which is basically a rich condition. On the other hand if on the fuel side you have maybe a clogged fuel injector or a carburetor that's not adjusted properly then you could have too little fuel and then you would have too little fuel to too much air which is a lean condition. The same thing can happen on the air side. Let's say if you have a clogged air filter that's not allowing enough air to enter, then you're gonna have too little air to too much fuel, which again is a rich condition. But if let's say you have a vacuum leak, which is unmetered air entering your engine, you're gonna have too much air to too little fuel, which again is a lean condition. All right, so with that out of the way, now let's go over some causes of you having high HC in your exhaust gases. And the first cause is gonna be a rich air fuel mixture. And what are some examples of that? Well, like we said, a uh, defective O2 sensor could definitely cause that. And more specifically, I'm talking about your pre-cat or upstream O2 sensor. See on this car, here's our catalytic converter. This is our pre-cat or upstream O2 sensor, which is responsible for adjusting the fuel air fuel mixture. It senses the amount of oxygen coming out of the engine, and that's how it makes the adjustment. Uh, and that's our post-cat or downstream O2 sensor, which is responsible for monitoring the efficiency of your catalytic converter. Now beside the O2 sensor, a leaky fuel injector or a carburetor that's not adjusted properly could pump too much fuel in your engine and cause a rich condition. And on the air side, a clogged air filter can choke off the air that's going into your engine, therefore throwing off the balance and causing a rich condition as well. All right, now interestingly enough, besides a rich air fuel mixture, a very lean air fuel mixture that causes misfires can also cause you to have high HC, and again, think of HC as unburnt fuel. That's probably the best way of looking at it while you're trying to diagnose this. Uh, and this is because when you have a very lean air fuel mixture and it causes misfires, then you're basically, you're not burning the HC. It's just simply going into your combustion chamber and then skipping out into your exhaust fumes and that's how you get the elevated levels of AC. But again, it has to be enough to cause a misfire because if it's not causing a misfire, then simply uh, you're gonna have an air fuel mixture that's not accurate, but you're gonna have a very lean air fuel mixture. In other words, you're gonna have a lot of air to the same, you know, same amount of air fuel, let's say, that you're supposed to have. And that air is just gonna simply burn off all the HC, so you're not gonna have any leftover. It has to cause a misfire in order for you to have a uh, excessive amount of HC. Now as far as what can cause a very lean air fuel mixture, well on the air side uh, obviously a very large vacuum leak could definitely cause that and on the fuel side maybe a clogged fuel pump strainer or maybe a weak fuel pump or a fuel filter that's clogged or injectors that are clogged could also keep you from uh, pumping enough gas in there causing you to have a very lean air fuel mixture. Now besides your air fuel mixture causing you to have excessive amounts of HC your ignition components being defective or worn can also cause that as well. And by those components, I'm talking about your ignition coil, spark plug wires, and spark plugs. But also if your timing is off, that could cause you to have excessive amounts of HC as well. As far as timing is concerned, we're talking about ignition timing, which is adjustable on these older cars that have a distributor system. And by a lot of newer cars, it's all done electronically, your ignition timing, so therefore you can't really adjust it. Now something to make a note of is that, uh, you know, a lot of times if you have a bad ignition coil, you could get a check engine light, but if you have worn spark plug wires or spark plugs themselves, you know, you might not get a check engine light because they're not producing a misfire, but since you know, the spark plug wire or the plug itself is worn, it's not gonna allow you to have a strong enough spark to light up the air fuel mixture completely 
in order, in order to have a complete combustion. Therefore, it's important, let's say if you're trying to diagnose high levels of HC because you failed smog and your car runs fine, you don't have any check engine lights, you don't experience any lack of power or any other signs, uh, then I would recommend you replace your spark plug wires and spark plugs. If that doesn't work, then I would recommend you look into the upstream or pre-cat O2 sensor because a lot of times these also get worn out where they don't send the signal as fast as they should or uh, and, you know, it's, they don't allow your computer to adjust the air fuel mixture as fast as it's supposed to. At the same time, they don't set a check engine light. All right, next let's go on to diagnosing problems of having high CO or carbon monoxide, which is basically a product of incomplete combustion. And basically that means you have high levels of carbon monoxide when HC or the fuel in your combustion chamber is not completely burned. All right, now similar to uh, HC, high levels of CO could also be caused by a rich air fuel mixture. And the reasons for that are obviously the same. That's because if you have too, too much fuel and not enough air, again, you simply don't have enough air to burn the fuel that you have in your combustion chamber. You're gonna have an incomplete combustion and that's why you're gonna have too much uh, carbon monoxide. Well, unlike the case for hydrocarbons, uh, lean condition cannot cause your CO levels to rise because you know, lean condition means you have too much air to too little fuel and if you have too much air then you're obviously going to get to burn all the fuel that's in your combustion chamber and you're not going to have too many uh, fuel, too much fuel or hydrocarbons that are only partially burned. But again, similar to hydrocarbons, the effective or worn ignition components, like the components and the timing issue we talked about, could cause you to have excessive amounts, amounts of uh, Carbon monoxide because again you could have a weak spark and the weak spark is not completely burning off the fuel that's in your combustion chamber uh, contributing to the elevated levels of uh, carbon monoxide in your exhaust fumes. Now before we go on I think I need to mention that these are obviously some examples that it could that could cause a rich or a lean condition earlier that I told you. It could be a variety of uh, components or other mechanical issues. In fact a couple of things are coming into mind like if you have a very worn engine then you're obviously not going to have enough compression to compress the, the air fuel mixture therefore you're not going to have a efficient combustion therefore it's going to raise your HC and CO levels. But also on the sensor side let's say if you have a bad MAF or MAP sensor uh, which is either a mass air flow or a mass air pressure sensor depending on your car's make and model and that sensor is the metering device that measures the amount of air entering your engine so if that sensor is defective then you could have a potential a problem uh, in my limited experience it could cause a lean condition but some people say it can also cause a rich condition but uh, you know that's something you want to keep in mind all right next let's cover some causes of high NOx or nitrous oxide which is basically a product of combustion happening at very high temperatures so first up on the list is going to be if you have a problem in your cooling system. Like let's say if you have a bad water pump or a bad radiator fan, uh, your engine temperature is going to rise therefore increasing the combustion temperatures which is going to result in having excessive amounts of NOx uh, in your exhaust fumes. Next up, a lean air fuel mixture could also cause that. And just to be clear, generally speaking when you, when you talk about a lean air fuel mixture, the biggest culprit is going to be a vacuum leak. So if you have a if you have this issue and you're looking at a lean air fuel mixture, you should look at a vacuum leak first. Next up, a bad EGR valve or EGR system, problem with the EGR system. Now the EGR is, is, is uh, specifically designed to reduce the combustion temperatures. Now the EGR valve is closed at idle but opens once the RPM rises, or, you know, goes up past uh, usually probably around like 12, 13, 1500 RPMs. So if you, if you have a test at idle, where you are and NOx is okay, passes at idle but fails at a higher RPM, then that's a dead giveaway that you could potentially have a problem with your EGR valve. Basically your EGR valve is either not working, not opening, or maybe the vacuum line that's going to it, or if it's equipped with a solenoid, the solenoid that activates it is not working or broken. Next up on the list, if you have a bad catalytic converter, you're also going to have excessive amounts of NOx. In addition, you're probably going to have high HC and CO2. But a dead giveaway, giveaway for a bad catalytic converter that has lost its uh, efficiency is going to be your NOx levels being way off the chart. You know, we're not talking like, let's say if the NOx levels are, for the sake of argument, 500. Uh, maximum allowed 500 parts of nitrous oxide in your, when you get the test sheet but your reading is let's say 1500 or something you know double or triple that then that's a dead giveaway usually that you have a 
bad television converter. But also before I forget, an overly advanced timing, if you have a distributor system on your car, could also increase your uh, combustion temperatures, which again results in having excessive amount of NOx in your emissions. All right, that's about it. But if you like this video, you may also like these other related videos. I'll put a link to them on this side of the screen. Uh, the first one is going to be how you can test an O2 sensor. Also going to be another one on how you can test the catalytic converter to make sure that's not why you failed emissions. But if you like this one, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time. All right, thanks for watching.